Good morning, everybody. Uh, last week, I forgot that it was Friday and said, welcome to Monday Morning Devotions. Today, welcome to Friday Morning Devotions. It is great to be with you this morning, and I pray that you're having a uh, blessed morning or blessed day as uh, at, at whatever time you're watching this devotion today. Um, and I pray that uh, this is an opportunity for you to connect with others in the body of Christ. I know um, there are a few of you who always comment on these devotions and uh, you know you know that you're watching them alongside uh, other members of your family or friends, people that you can build up um, in you know in faith as, uh, as you watch these, together from afar. And uh, I love that. That's awesome. Um, I'm glad that this can be a place where people come together and, uh, and connect together and n unite as, uh, as one people in Christ. So we're going to sing a song that kind of reflects on that idea in our hymn today. We're going to sing number 649 in the Lutheran Service Book Hymnal. It is, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. It's talking about Jesus, right? The um, the one who brings us together in himself. So let's sing. Blessed be the tie that binds. Blessed be the tie that binds Our hearts in Christian love The fellowship of kindred minds Is like to that above before our Father's throne, we pour our ardent prayers. Our fears, our hopes, our aims are one, our comforts and our cares. We share our mutual woes, our mutual burdens bear. And often for each other flows the sympathizing tear. When here our pathways part, we suffer bitter pain. Yet one in Christ and one in heart, we hope to meet again. From sorrow, toil, and pain, and sin we shall be free, and perfect love and friendship reign through all eternity. Our reading today is from the end of Second Samuel chapter 8. We begin with verse 15. So David reigned over all Israel, and David administered justice and equity to all his people. Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was over the army, and Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilad, was recorder, Zadok, the son of Ahitub, and Ahimelech, the son of Abiathar, were priests, and Sariah was secretary, and Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, Jehoiada, there we go, was over the Carathites and the Pelathites, and David's sons were priests. Maybe a better translation is David's sons were court officials. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, that's the section. That's the reading for today, right? A, a, a reading about the people that served in uh, in David's court, and he's king over all of Israel. And it says here that he did. He administered justice and equity to all his people. But David couldn't do this alone, right? He's king over a large kingdom. We just heard about the expansion of the kingdom yesterday from, from the, the Great Sea to the, the river Euphrates in the north to the, to the uh, uh, across the Jordan in the east and to the south uh, as far as the, um, the river of Egypt and, you know, kind of uh, having a port on the Red Sea. And so this is a uh, 
large territory, and David can't rule it alone. He needs others around him, but not just any others, right? Those who are going to be trusted by him to work in this same way as he desires to rule over this people with justice and equity. And, uh, and so that God's people are taken care of and treated alongside the, the law of God that he had developed for them. So one of the things that the king had to do in, uh, in preparation for being a king of Israel, maybe you remember this, um, from other readings or other texts and other places in scripture is the king was supposed to write his own copy of the book of the law. And so when he would do this, then he would have for himself a place where he could meditate on God's word day and night. David seems to have done this because he writes um, about meditating on God's word day and night in his Psalms and, and his desire to do that. And so, uh, so he would have had his own text of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and, and he could, would go into them and, and know, ah, this is how God desires his people to be with one another. This is how they're supposed to be treated as a united body of, of believers in Yahweh, right? I almost said body of Christ. They really are united in their faith in Yahweh who would send a Messiah, a Christ for them. So that works too. But the, the idea is David isn't alone, right? He knows that he needs others around him to be able to help out in this administration. Even somebody who um, has this blessing of God and, the, uh, and he's been anointed to serve in this role needs others around him to help him out. And this is us too. It's the body of Christ, right? We're, we're here as, uh, as God's people. We get to share in this medium of, of uh, Facebook or YouTube and watch um, devotions together. And you're watching them alongside whoever else it comes before you or after you in the uh, in your interaction of this. So if you look at the view count or how many people liked this video, um, then that's uh, others that you may never meet in person in this life, but are part of your brothers and sisters in Christ. But also, it is important to have those people around you that can walk in this faith with you and give you advice and encouragement and wisdom um, and help you where, where you're deficient and lacking, people who, um, who build, build you up in your faith. And, uh, and as we like to say here at St. Paul, uh, we follow Jesus better when we follow him together. And so understanding that, I pray that, uh, that you are continuing to uh, have conversations with others about what has God up to you in your life. How is he at work today? What struggles are you facing? Don't face those alone. What joys are you experiencing? Don't celebrate alone. Right? Have others uh, who are on your rope with you, who can connect with you in this, this walking of following Jesus together. And as you do that, you can rejoice that God is hopefully continuing to build up that word of promise in you, keep you, um, you know, when, when, you're, when you're struggling to, to follow his, his will, um, kind of being corrected and, and shaped back to that. When you're feeling alone or isolated, right? The body of Christ surrounds you. When you are weak, the body of Christ lifts you up. When you have abilities and gifts, you get to share those and use um, those to bless the others around you. If you are someone who's feeling disconnected or not, you know, not connected, I, I'm going to encourage you to take some time today and find someone that you can talk to and reach out to and say, hey, would you like to go get coffee and talk together? Would you like to come over to my house and hang out for a little while and uh, have some time of fellowship? Would you uh, be willing to just sit and uh, and talk with me on the phone for a little bit? I have a few things I'm working through and, and wrestling with. Um, people who can be like advisors to you fellow servants in the kingdom of God who desire to follow Jesus with you too. And when we do this together, right, then we're able to be people who 
are ministering justice and equity to people around us, right? So that we're um, being a blessing to uh, the body of Christ that we're connected to, but also out into the world who needs to hear the love of Christ too. So we pray that God would work not just in me when you think about it individually. Don't just pray that God would work in me. Pray that he would work in us as a body together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have uh, connected me and all these others who are here in this video to a larger body of Christ that is not isolated or, or singled out, um, even though we, we may feel that way at times, even though uh, sometimes it's difficult for us to find others to connect with even. Sometimes we, uh, we want to go through our struggles alone and, and don't want to burden others. Lord, we know that Jesus desires us to call upon him in every trouble and lay our worries and anxieties and troubles on him. And our brother or sister in Christ also gets to show us the face of Jesus as they walk alongside us too and serve as a brother or sister who embodies love and mercy and grace and patience and peace. Lord, please surround us with those others. Please help us see we're never a burden when we share the, the life that we deal with together because we place all those things not on each other, but upon you, the one who carries them for us, the one who promises to make our burdens light. Lord Jesus, guide us today as we follow you together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.